Thank you. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for sticking around. So yes, I'm Olivier Tardieu from IBM Research, and today I'm joined by Abhishek Advankar from IBM Research as well. And you know, essentially, we are going to talk about our journey trying to increase GPU utilization in, in our clusters, right? And when you think about it, there are lots of reasons uh, having good GPU utilization is hard. But one of them is a very, very, very silly one, if you think about it. It's, we have jobs that use thousands of GPUs. We have jobs that use hundreds of GPUs, tens of GPUs, four GPUs, two GPUs, one GPUs, and that's pretty much it. We hardly have any jobs using a half a GPU, a quarter of a GPU, or anything like that. And the reason is just too hard. It's just too hard for cluster administrators, too hard for application developers. They have to do non-trivial things. Too hard for users. Just basically, in practice, practice doesn't happen, right? And that leads to increased costs, uh, you know, jobs that we cannot run because we're waste, wasting resources on, on, on jobs that don't need them, and so on and so forth. And so what we've been on is this journey to try to make it easier, ideally trivial, to pack multiple AI workloads on the same GPU, to think of a GPU resource as one that can be shared by running multiple workloads at the same time. And a key word here, an important key word is dynamic. It's not about just about saying, OK, here are four workloads. Please put all of these four workloads at once on the GPU. But it's really going at it the Kubernetes way. I'm getting a workload, it needs a quarter of a GPU. Give it a quarter of a GPU. I'm getting another workload. It needs half of a GPU. It can you know, go to the same GPU as the previous one. Can we do that? And so in order to really realize this vision of a very easy uh, fractional GPU uh, utilization for our users, we, we need two things. We need to improve the platform, which is what we're going to talk about today. But we also need to help our user know how much of a GPU they need for their workloads. And if you're interested in this topic, right-sizing workload, in particular right-sizing inference workloads, we actually have a talk later uh, this Thursday in the main conference about that that I encourage you to see. So today we are going to talk uh, just a little bit more about motivation, how we go about fractioning GPUs, the kind of technology we use for fractioning GPUs in our clusters, how it's supported in Kubernetes, you know, what's good about the existing support for that, what's not so good about it, which will lead to InstaSlice, how we, at least in November 2024, how we go around, work around this limitation of the Kubernetes platform to do a better job at fractional GPU allocation. And finally, we'll give you a demo of this and we'll kind of broaden the spectrum to talk about you know, the other things you need to really make this a practical platform, talking about how we can manage quotas, how we can manage queuing in a system that, that, that permits GPU sharing. So motivation, you know, one of the very obvious or maybe the most important AI use case these days is serving models, not just training them, preparing the data, doing all of these, but at the end of the day, we want to run the model, ask them questions and get answers. And we all talk about large language models. We all know that models these days go in the hundreds of billions of parameters, if not more. But we also have lots of small models. In particular, these days, of course, I need to upgrade my laptop. Uh, in particular, these days, we have small models. We have, for instance, Llama 3.2 models that just came out of Meta that are so-called edge models that in, are in the billions of parameters. And given the GPUs we have today that have easily tens, if not nowadays hundreds of uh, more than 100 mega, uh, gigabytes of memory, we can at least in principle run multiple of those models, multiple of those workloads on the same GPU at the same time. Now, if you really think about it, there's a challenge there if we want to do this right. Because it's not just the question of the size of the model, but it's also uh, how much load you're going to have the bot in this model, what's the architecture of the model, what are your performance expectations for this model. So if you want to right-size things, it's a bit tricky. This is the graph on the right. This is the next talk. But today, as I said, we're going to focus on the platform. How do we enable at least running those workloads if we know how much of a GPU they should, they should get. So uh, there are different ways to go after fractioning GPUs. The one we particularly like is the multi-instance GPU feature of the NVIDIA data center GPUs, which uh, you know, gives us some flexibility. It's not infinite. You know, we can only slice the GPU into seven pieces. But that's pretty good already. And it has a lot of advantages, in particular in terms of isolation. 
which means we can have you know, guarantees of you know, secure isolation between workloads. We can also have guarantees of performance isolation between workloads. So for a number of reasons, again, I don't really have time to get into. This is the one we like. And in fact, I believe NVIDIA, Kevin and his cool speaker, have a talk sometimes in the conference talking about the different ways you can slice NVIDIA GPUs. And if you want to know more about the pros and cons of the different methods, I suggest you go listen to this talk. One particular good feature about uh, uh, slicing using that technique is that we can do heterogeneous layouts. Where we can mix and match different ways of uh, assembling those slices or, or sizing those slices in the same GPU. And we can also go at it incrementally, meaning I can have a first workload that you know, uh, requisition a piece of a GPU and then another workload that gets another piece and then the first one can finish and then we can put another one and we can keep going as we are used to do on, on, on Kubernetes. How do you do that today in Kubernetes? When the main way of doing that today in Kubernetes is using MIG, is using the NVIDIA GPU operator. And the NVIDIA GPU operator actually supports slicing, it supports heterogeneous layouts, it works using labels and you know, a bunch of uh, software. Uh, for instance, I can label my node to be all balanced. And what that will give me is essentially all the, all the GPUs on my node will be prepared in the same uh, layout that you see at the bottom. My node uh, capacity, allocatable capacity, will now reflect the existence of this new MIG uh, dash XYZ resources, and then my pods can come in and request those resources and be placed on those GPUs, on those slices, and everything is great. It's a stable feature, it's supported. It's actually even kind of dynamic because I can change my label, wait a few minutes, and see all my GPUs be reconfigured in a different way. It's not so great because it's not partial, it's not incremental, and it's not fast. Right? So in particular, if I want to take the two green slices here and make them a blue slice, I have to do the same thing to all my GPUs in the node, and I have to evict all the GPU workloads on my node before resubmitting things to my node. So that's not great. So the community, as a result, or you know, this is one of the reasons the community has been working on this new capability called dynamic resource allocation. Uh, that is really a community-wide project trying to rethink how we do resource uh, requests and resource allocations. Kubernetes is very ambitious. And six months ago, it was capable of doing uh, dynamic MIG uh, fractioning and allocation. And we were very excited about it. We talked about it uh, at the last KubeCon. And the only thing is that it's no longer possible. DRA is still very much uh, a, a, a pro an ongoing project that I think is making a lot of progress. We're contributing to it. It's converging. But at this point in time, you know, in you know, this capability has been removed and will come back again at some later point in the future. So as a result, right now, we have to work around this and do our own thing. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Olivier. Um, so welcome to the InstaSlice operator. Uh, we are reintroducing it from our last KubeCon talk, and it has gone through quite a bit of changes. We also share link and QR code to the GitHub repository. It's an open source project. So InstaSlice operator consumes uh, stable APIs available in Kubernetes and works with the vendor GPU operator to create partitions and manage partition lifecycle. InstaSlice works on gated pods, which allows it to work with the default scheduler. We highlight few goals of the system, ability to allocate and configure slices. Slices are created by accounting classical resources like CPU and memory. It provides placement manages slice lifecycle with the workload, provides policies for placement optimization, and has integration with Kubernetes quotas as well as queue quotas, which Olivier will talk about. Now let's try to understand the stack and the InstaSlice operator component. The GPU operator is the first component in the stack. It provides ability to configure and enable vendor GPUs to the Kubernetes cluster. InstaSlice consumes version 24.6.1 that has the feature which enables slice management by external controllers. The next feature in the system which we use is scheduling gates, available since Kubernetes 1.30. A pod can have multiple scheduling gates as described in the sample pod snippet. InstaSlice consumes gated pods, meaning as soon as a pod enters in the system, 
It is gated by the InstaSlice controller so that the scheduler is not busy waiting on it to perform necessary setup, which involves slice creation with placement. We talked about placement in the previous slide. Let's define it. Placement is defined as the act of selecting the desired node from the cluster and later choosing the correct index and correct GPU from multiple devices available on the node. Placement guarantees slice existence while reducing fragmentation in the system. Placement in instance slice is achieved by using node selector, which is added by the instance slice controller, and config map, which is created by instance slice daemon set. In the bottom right side, we show config map snippet that is used to select a GPU index from multiple GPUs available on the node. In later releases, we plan to move to a CDI specification. We talked about the controller and the daemon set in previous slides. Um, now let's take a deep dive of the InstaSlice operator and understand the components. The InstaSlice operator consists of a webhook, controller, and daemon set. Webhook mutates the pods to add finalizer for graceful workload termination and mutates GPU resources to be owned by InstaSlice. Controller provides accounting and placement intent and daemon set realizes the intent provided by the controller. We dive a bit deeper into instance slice states. States are needed for slice lifecycle management with the workload. In this slides, there are two kinds of states, Kubernetes states for the workload and allocation states created by the instance slice operator. When the Kubernetes state is scheduling gated, it means that pod has entered the system and waiting for the slice to be provisioned. Instance slice controller creates allocation, and the allocation will be in the state creating. When the slice is created by the daemon set, it will move the existing allocation in state created. Once the slice is created, workload slash pod gets ungated. When the Kubernetes state is pending, it means scheduler is consuming the instance slice placement and is in the process of binding pods to the node. When the Kubernetes state is running, it means that pod is ungated and scheduler has binded the pod to the node. When the workload is completed or deleted by the user, Kubernetes state of the workload will be terminating. This will cause the allocation to enter into state deleting, which is set by the controller. Daemon set will eventually delete the slice and set the status to deleted. This causes controller to remove finalizer from the pod and finally the pod should disappear from the system. Now we'll understand the instance slice component inter interaction in a single node system. Uh, we see that uh, in, this, in this single node system, the instance slice component is already deployed. What daemon set does here is, is daemon set is mutating the node object, and the node object here has two different kinds of resources. The accelerator memory quota is the sum of GPU memory available on the node, and this can be used with, as an integration to, with Kubernetes quotas for multi-tenancy use cases, as well as the instance slice uh, operator here is, is mutating um, the, the slice profiles available uh, by the uh, vendor uh, uh, on, on, the, on the node. Now, uh, once this happens, what uh, the daemon said later, will uh, create the instance slice CR with placements, profiles, uh, that is available by uh, the vendor GPU. Later, the gated pod is queried by the instance slice controller, and then the instance slice controller will look for a placement for such a gated pod. It will create the config map such that it can pin the pod to the desired GPU, and, and finally, it will ungate the pod so that the scheduler can consume the placement which is created by the instance slice controller. Based on one's use case, one would want to explore different types of slice placement. Instance slice today supports placement by allocation policy interface, where you can place slice either from right to left, left to right, or first fit. In this version, we have implemented the first fit policy. Instance slice is available at operator hub and we share uh, the QR code and the link uh, to download it on your cluster. 
Uh, let's go to the demo. Um, uh. So what we see here is an OpenShift cluster. This cluster has six nodes, and out of the six nodes available, two nodes are GPU-enabled nodes. This, clus this cluster also has the GPU operator installed. There is a slight configuration change that you need to do in the GPU operator, where you set the MIG manager policy essentially to nil, such that the external controllers like InstaSlice can manage and create slices. Now we go ahead and install uh, the InstaSlice operator on the OpenShift cluster using make OCP deploy command. Soon we would see that uh, the InstaSlice contro controller coming up in the cluster. Now, there are two GPU-enabled nodes in the cluster. In node S0, what we would see is uh, the daemon set trying to mutate this node. So we see that the allocatable and capacity section is now set to the max profile count that is available on the node. We also see that um, uh, the daemon set has a new resource called accelerator memory quota, which can be used for uh, the integration with cube quota and for multi-tenancy use cases. We see that the allocated resources are zero, which is expected because no workload is consuming the resources. Same is the case with node S3. We see that uh, the allocated and capacity section have been mutated to the max profile count. And we see that the allocated resources are now zero. Now we start a debug pod on both the GPU enabled nodes and see if there are any slices on, on, on the nodes. And as we can see that there are no GPU slices available on the node. What we now see is the InstaSlice object here, or the InstaSlice CR. The name of the InstaSlice CR follows the node name. So node S0 uh, has the following profiles that has been discovered by the InstaSlice daemon set. We see that there are eight H100s available on the node, the total amount of CPU and the total amount of memory, and also the profiles uh, that, that are exposed by uh, the vendor. Same is the case with node S3. We see again eight GPUs, the total amount of CPU, memory, and vendor profiles. Now we submit a pod. This pod is a Jupyter Notebook pod. Once we submit the pod, what we see here is that a finalizer has been added to this pod. It's a slice.redhat.com slash accelerator. We also see that uh, the resources section now is mutated and has been owned by the InstaSlice controller here. We also see the status of the pod here. The status of the pod initially was scheduling gated and now it is pending. Soon the pod uh, will be in state running. So now the pod is in state running. We see the pod logs. With this URL, we can now open the Jupyter Notebook. Let's try to open the Jupyter Notebook here. Once the Jupyter Notebook is open, let's try to train a model with the help of Jupyter Notebook. So we do a run all cells here. We wait on train the model cell. Uh, to verify if it's using the slice that the InstaSlice controller uh, created for this Jupyter Notebook. This notebook, uh, as we know, runs sequentially, so we have to wait for some time till the uh, train the model cell uh, hits its execution. We now see that the, the notebook is running and it's consuming the slice that the InstaSlice controller created it. The notebook obviously runs to completion. We'll now see the, uh, another aspect of InstaSlice controller, with the sli is, which is the slice lifecycle management. So as we delete the pod here, uh, the pod should enter into the graceful termination phase and eventually should clear up uh, the slice that was previously created. 
So we will now launch debug pods on both the nodes and re-verify again if there are any existing slices. And as we can see, there are no slices uh, pending. We also have an integration with VLLM deployment here. So quickly walking through, uh, I mean, this is a deployment. It spawns a pod. It adds finalizer. It does mutations. And you can send an inference request uh, to it. Salt Lake City is it. And it comes back with a response, great place to live in. So it has a VLLM integration here too. Uh, and if I move forward uh, to the end, you also see that once I de delete the VLLM deployment, the slice uh, available on the node um, is being deleted. So that concludes my demo about Insta Slice. Thank you, Abhishek. So uh, coming back to the presentation, uh, uh, you know, just just pointing first, pointing a couple of things before we conclude, right? In order to really use productive yield, use something like Insta Slice or eventually DRA in a in a in a shared multi-tenant cluster running batch AI jobs like most of our clusters, we need we need to handle a couple of things, a couple of problems. We need to understand quotas, how this interface interacts with quotas, and how this interacts with queue management. And one of the challenges with MIG is it's actually offering us choices. We can use one GPU one way, we can use one GPU another way, for instance, these two ways. And so if I want to use Kubernetes quotas to actually specify what can, be, what, to limit the, uh, the ability of a team to use too many GPUs, I may say, you know, you can use seven of these one slice type, but then I cannot use the GPU another, another way. I can say you can use the GPU in this other way, but then if I do that, now I can use two GPUs, right? Now we need quotas that also understand that this is an or and not an and. So the way we do that with InstaSlice is by inventing a new synthetic resource called accelerated memory quota that we automatically, we automatically compute the weight of a pod when you submit a pod. We add that as, as a resource to the pod spec, and then you can essentially define quotas using that quantity. Now, uh, when it comes to queuing, uh, you know, we use queue at this point in our clusters to do, to do queuing of jobs, and queue can do lots of neat things. I'm sure you heard Hard Aldo, among others, describing this this morning. And in order to make, we need to make queue and InstaSlice understand each other, right? So one half of that is to make InstaSlice understand that a queued pod should not be given a slice yet. It has to be admitted before. Uh, you, you give it a slice, and this is essentially queue like Insta Slice use pod gating. So Insta Slice understands that gated pod should be ignored until they are ungated. And conversely, we need queue to also understand that these quotas are now these uh, complicated expressions where you can consume things one way or another way or another way. And in order to do that, we've again Aldo mentioned this this morning. We just introduced in Q0.9 the ability to define, essentially, to formalize and define quotas that are essentially equivalent to what I just described in the previous slide. Now, before I conclude, I want to go back to DRA. Right? Again, as I said before, we're we're part of the DRA effort. We're uh, very excited about it. We're looking forward to do everything it's you know wants to do. But at this point in time in Kubernetes 0.2, the support for partitionable devices, the kind of fractioning I described, is in plan. It's an API, but there's no implementation behind it, right? With InstaSlice, you can do all of that today. And one of the reasons is because we're not as ambitious with InstaSlice. We're really trying to go after this one problem of fractioning GPUs, forgetting about autoscaling, forgetting about all the things that are not critical to you know, or most important workloads and focusing on that. And so what that means is uh, long term, we expect just as they were before InstaSlice and DRA to get, you know, to, to merge and to be combined together. Uh, InstaSlice in particular providing the ease of use on top of whatever DRA API uh, is. Uh, but as of today, right now you can use InstaSlice and DRA you have to wait. InstaSlice, as we said before, is open source. It's easy to deploy. You can get it in one click on Operator Hub. You can see your GitHub repo. You don't have to change the Kubernetes scheduler. You don't have to change the, Kuben the GPU operator. You don't have to change your pod specs, your workloads. It just works, except that instead of having to pre-slice and think very hard about how you organize your GPU, you can do this on the fly. And that's conclude the talk for today. There are a few slides, huh? I, I oh, know. sorry. 
Yeah. Doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Abhishek. And I want to mention, of course, we want to mention that this is a joint effort between IBM and, and Red Hat with a, a number of colleagues contributing to this project. Thank you. Very, very, very nice presentation and perfectly on time. So we have time for questions. We'll take one here. Thanks. Yeah, nice talk here. You am from NVIDIA. So other than, I'm just curious, and so far you assume, right, one application use one of the uh, big instance, but we also can do a uh, layered and uh, sharing, right? Multiple application can share big devices, so, either use time slicing or MPS, so any idea or so, plan for that? So Thank you. we're definitely not trying to do that with InstaSlice. So yes, you could do this layered approach, but, uh, you know, one of, again, one of the nice and complex thing that DRA introduces the notion of claims, in particular the notion of name claims, so that multiple pods can go and, you know, refer to the same claim. We are not trying to do that with InstaSlice. So we are trying to do sharing in the sense of dividing and distributing, but not sharing in the sense of giving the same piece to two different consumers. Right. Right. We'll take one more question quickly there. Real quick. is. Uh, does InstaSlice require a MIG capable GPU? Yes. Yep. Okay. So the A A30, A100, yeah. H100, B something. Yeah. But InstaSlice does run on a laptop, so it has an emulator mode. If you go under GitHub repository, and you can just start playing with the uh, emulator pod and emulator mode, so it runs on your laptop. And as we expect other vendors to offer similar capabilities, we expect to extend to those capabilities. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.